Hi everyone, it's the Treefer here, and welcome to this latest version of Focus Friday. Um, today I want to talk to you about how hard it actually is to rebuild a reef tank. Um, I know it's uh, most of you know that it's quite hard when you're starting over or starting from scratch. Uh, when you uh, want to set up a reef tank, it's uh, well, it's it's a big learning process, as the, the learning curve is uh, pretty high. But even when you've you went through the learning curve, whenever you're setting up a new reef tank, new challenges will uh, present themselves, and it will be always challenging. Some things will go wrong. So I hope that you know this when you have been watching the past 16-17 videos of this second season of, of Focus Friday um, because what I notice is that while I appreciate a lot of your comments and I appreciate the, the nice comments I've also seen an increasing amount of people that say well I liked your old tank a lot better uh, this one is just isn't it uh, well, why did you get rid of the reefer? It was such a nice tank. So, while I try to comment on each of these these remarks, or reply at least, I do think that it's necessary to well to give a little little explanation about that since it's well it got me thinking and it's quite difficult when you have to set up an entire new reef tank. Um, of course, I've taken with me a lot of stuff from the old tank so that's a challenge in itself you have a livestock <clears throat> that you need to uh, need to bring with you and you need to set up an entire new tank in this case I went from a 500 liter system to a 1200 liter system or at least the display is 1200 liters so there's 200 more in the sump uh, which we will get to in a minute um, so that's 1400 to from 500 so that's about three times as much water in there um, there's a lot of new rock in there as well some of the sand that is in here has been migrated from a previous tank so as you can imagine it's quite stressful for uh, the fish but also for the corals uh, going through this big change actually their entire ecosystem was destroyed when I tore down the old tank and it was rebuilt when setting up this new tank but rebuilding doesn't mean that it's stable um, and it will take a very long time it might even take up to a year or even longer uh, to regain the balance that I had in my previous tank so while I don't mind people that say I like your old tank better it's a previous if it's a perfectly fine comment to make I do think it's good to well to at least explain or show that it's very hard when you're coming from a, a, a thriving existing system and you're moving to an entirely new tank where you have to set up everything uh, f from scratch uh, you need to buy new equipment uh, you have a lot more rock in there you need to refigure out the way the flow is working in your tank you need to see how the fish are doing, how the corals are doing, uh, adjusting the dosage of the uh, additions that I do every day to my tank, automated of course, but the the calcium and the, the alkalinity uh, input from corals always decreases when you're moving to a new tank, so you need to adapt to that. So these values will vary, uh, nitrates and phosphates, they will spike uh, because of the rock, because of the sand, uh, it stirs up a whole lot of dirt that was in there. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to appreciate the fact that it takes quite a while for a system to regain uh, its previous uh, glory, if it ever does. Uh, so even, I don't know if if the system will ever get to a level that my previous tank was, I do hope so. So I will, th I will strive for that every day uh, that I'm uh, reefing. But 
it's very hard to uh, to uh, to tell that for sure, since it's an entirely new tank, uh, and I need to see what happens, need to see how it develops, um, and I think I've got the basics in order now. So the reef structure is the way I want it. Uh, the coral placement is the way I want it for the moment, for for now at least. Uh, the fish that I've got in there are the the combination of fish is actually perfect for me right now. So I don't plan on adding a lot more stuff in the next few months, at least not fish-wise. I might of course add some corals as they uh, get on my path one way or another. But corals are fine. You can easily add corals uh, without much impact on the system itself. So yeah, it might be a bit of a long talk. We're on six minutes now, but I, yeah, I just wanted to make myself a little, well, explain myself a little bit that I am trying, um, but yeah, it just takes some time uh, for a system to regain its stability, and uh, I know I'm not there yet. Um, of course, please feel free to comment whatever you like. So if you want to make the comment, it doesn't look as good as your old tank. You're right, it doesn't. I'm aware of it. I'll try. Um, yeah, I'll just keep keep building and keep going forward from here. So, thanks for listening to that. <laughs> I hope you uh, you survived. Um, there is still a few minutes left, so I'll uh, continue where I left off uh, le last week, where I was showing you uh, some of my fish. Uh, I did get a comment from some readers that said, or from some viewers actually, that uh, that said I. Uh, I missed some fish in your uh, fish review, so uh, these uh, mandarin dragonets are one of those fish. Unfortunately this one is just swimming away so it's a bit hard to show you. I'll try to find the other one for you. Um, so these dragonets have been in the tank for uh, a few years at least. Um, they have been doing very well. Um, they are very... Uh, uh, well. Uh, picky eaters so it might be a bit hard to get them to eat but as your reef matures or at least if, as you have more rock work inside your tank these fish will uh, will actually enjoy uh, uh, scouring the reef just looking for nooks and crannies to pick their food from and that's what they will do actually most of the day so they are uh, it's a couple um, they like each other, but they're not together all of the time. They like to uh, do uh, some uh, mating rituals in the early mornings or the late evenings. Um, and overall, they're a very nice uh, type of fish to have in your tank. Just be sure that you have enough uh, um, uh, live rock in there, or or you feed enough small food like copepods or lobster eggs that they can uh, can eat and then you'll be fine. Just be sure to add them into a mature tank or at least a tank with matured rock work. So, next one is the fox face. Um, I briefly mentioned it in my previous video. It eats a lot of algae, uh, so I always like this fish in my tank. It's, uh, it's nice and bright color-wise, so it's bright yellow there's also various colors that you can get from a, uh, a fox face or it's a type of rabbit fish. So there's gray ones. Um, there's also the yellow ones with a big black dot on its dorsal fin. Uh, this is just the normal yellow one, which I can appreciate uh, just as much. I've had the gray one also, um, Siganus magnificus, and this is just the Siganus vulpinus, if I'm right. So this is the regular one which is also a lot cheaper by the way it's about half price considering uh, the more expensive Magnificus which is also a very nice fish but in behavior they're actually very similar so let's see oh one of the other fish that I failed to mention last time was this uh, cleaner res so this is actually a type of res although you might not think it that of it that way it looks a bit different from a regular res although it's hard to call a res regular since there are so many different species of them uh, but this one is very small and it's 
cleaning the fish in the tank so as you can see sometimes you can catch it uh, cleaning a fish cleaning the uh, the the fins or uh, the um, just the, the body of the fish and eating little parasites of the fish it's, it's also what they do in nature um, actually they uh, clean uh, for example sharks shark teeth uh, shark skin uh, whale skin they yeah they actually their, their sole task in life is to clean other fish and that's what they enjoy doing most so I thought let's add one since uh, well of course these uh, there are fish that are very prone to uh, white spots to ick like for example this uh, blue hippo tang or for example this uh, Gelman rostratus the, the butterfly uh, fish um, yeah it's just overall if your tank is large enough and you can give the cleaner rest enough um, other fish to clean it will definitely have a good time in your tank don't add it to your tank if you only have two or three fish in there since it will then uh, try well attempt to clean them all day long and it will stress out your fish more than it does them uh, good it will do them more harm than good and that's something to consider when uh, when adding one of these fish so only add it when uh, when you have enough fish in there to uh, to actually clean And then, of course, the fish that I failed to discuss last time was this uh, uh, this small but very useful fish, which is called a puelaris. It's a goby, and it's a sand sifting goby, and they're uh, doing a very nice job in keeping this uh, tank's sand very clean, as you can see. Uh, they like to build... Uh, uh, well, little holes for themselves as you can see here for example but then as you know if you've seen my previous videos there is this uh, blue ribbon eel a leaf nosed blue ribbon eel uh, who likes to occupy these uh, these holes that it's digging for itself so it's a constant game of the polaris digging holes and then this this eel taking over it over the hole and then uh, well that's actually what it does all day long switching uh, switching holes and then the fish is uh, moving to the other one which is not occupied at the moment so it's a nice game to watch uh, where they're constantly moving and switching places so the last fish I want to discuss is uh, one that I already discussed in a previous video, which is the spotted drum. Um, yeah, let's uh, get that out of the way. It's doing very well. It has been doing very well for the past few weeks. Very glad that I uh, added it again after a while of uh, not being in the tank. And um, yeah, so it's uh, maturing nicely. Um, it's eating very well so it has already adapted to frozen foods which uh, of course is uh, very nice since that's what they uh, um, they should eat otherwise they will uh, try to eat your inverts what they, what they are known for as well so they can eat shrimp they can eat crabs I don't have any shrimp in here so it's uh, something to consider if you want to buy one of these spotted drums Equatus punctatus uh, which is a really nice fish to keep be sure to realize that they can eat your shrimp if they feel like it especially if they're getting bigger they will uh, will probably get a taste create a taste for them and then uh, well it will be our IP for the shrimp so yeah that's uh, the fish I wanted to show you today I hope you uh, you uh, you enjoyed the video um, and I wish you a very uh, nice weekend and I'll see you in the next one next Friday. So until then, have a good day. Bye bye.